Hey folks, I'm here for another quick video about BitCenter um, and today we're going to talk about similarities between the AI boom and the internet boom and investing in subnets compared to traditional AI companies and a whole lot more. So I guess if you go back then, the, you know, two of the big dogs were Amazon and Google. Uh, I know there was slightly uh, different, you know, there's a five year gap there, but you know, Amazon had a $1.6 billion revenue and a three bill valuation, and Google had $3.2 billion revenue and a 10 bill uh, valuation. So pretty typical, and there's many other companies that were very similar to that. And when you compare things to now, we have OpenAI, a $12 billion revenue and $150 billion valuation, and Anthropic, uh, $4 billion rev and $20 billion valuation. Now, obviously, I haven't included profits here because OpenAI and Anthropic, in fact, which I've spelt Anthropic here, <laughs> um, they're, they're all bleeding cash, like hand over fist. Uh, typically, rough rule of thumb is that, um, you know, for every, like if we, if we take Anthropic, I believe that for every dollar of revenue that they make, they're burning $5 um, worth of costs. Um, so yeah, and I know, you know, the, the, the numbers seem a lot bigger now, but don't forget when you look at USM2, the currency supply has pretty much tripled since the, the 2000. So back in sort of 1999, 2000-ish, it was about 5 trillion. We're now at 22. So actually it's 4x and more. Um, and, you know, we will see much bigger valuations. We'll see companies that do even bigger revenue because the globe or the world is effectively being more compacted as, as tech proliferates uh, and that there's just more currency sloshing around. Why bother investing in leading AI companies like OpenAI, etc., compared to a subnet? Well, let's have a look at some AI centralized AI companies. Sometimes you can't even invest in them. You know, that some, some of them are private. Lots is obfuscated. So there, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that you just won't have optics on. Can you really trust them? Like, do you trust Bill Gates? Do you trust Sam Altman? You know, when you look at OpenAI, I think they have one of the, the, the ex-heads of the NSA is on, on the board of OpenAI now. Do you trust that? I sure as hell don't. Um, they are constantly diluting. Every time they do a, a, a cap raise of some sort, they have to issue more shares. So, or, or, or they may do stock splits. So, you know, you, you have this this ice cube that may be getting more valuable, but it's all also melting because they're, they're, they're constantly diluting you. There's minimal yield, uh, if they even do um, uh, dividends, and the entire market share and business model is, is really vulnerable. Uh, when you look at a, a lot of the centralized AI companies, you know, again, their opportunities is a shrinking sort of ice cube. So like there's a lot of emphasis in compute at the moment and compute, uh, AI compute is, I, is a commodity. The upside you can get or the profits that you can squeeze from, from compute is, is shrinking every single day. So if you go back in the old days, like I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, data was very expensive, but tech naturally wants to go down that, that, that downward spiral of gross marginal cost. So data right now is cheap as chips. Uh, and compute power will also do that. Um, so yeah, everyone's chasing compute at the moment, um, but again, that's getting squeezed heavily. And also, like with, with a centralized AI company, if they want to double their compute power, they have to go out and buy a huge chunk of land. They need to get the power generation, storage and distribution to power the, the massive data centers that they need to put in. Uh, they need to network and cable and, and, and get even more GPUs from Jensen. Uh, which they probably can't because Elon is just hoovering all of them up. Um, so in order for these companies to, to scale or even double, there's huge amounts of time and, and capital in, um, in intensiveness, if that makes it. That's even a word. Um, and a lot of them are hindered by politics uh, and affected heavily by the big macroeconomic picture. Let's just say the US does start putting on the handbrake, handbrake on, on Western AI. Um, one that I think it's unlikely, but like, you're just giving the competition over to China. China will, will not put the handbrakes on on AI development. So, 
But you know, if, if you're a, if you've invested in a centralized AI company in the US and they and they were to count out uh, you know regulations and whatnot, um, you know the, your market share for that business is just going to lose out to like a deep seek equivalent in, in China. And then there is huge insider trading. Now, if you think that there isn't, I think you're <laughs> slightly naive. Uh, just go and look at Nancy Pelosi's stock portfolio track record and many other uh, US congressmen and senators that seem to be absolutely destroying Warren Buffett uh, or, or most hedge fund managers. Um, pretty much, in fact, if you want to go down a rabbit hole, look at all of this, the, the US politicians that sit on certain committees of a certain industry or sector. Then look at their, their stock trading performance. So, what about BitTensor subnet? Well, you can, it's accessible 24 seven. There's nothing stopping you from, from buying and selling your, your alpha, as in the, your, your subnet token. Um, it's, it's very transparent in comparison to stocks. Um, can you, you, you don't really need to trust the, the subnet, most of it is, is transparent. You can see everything has set rules and procedures. Um, yes, the subnet owner can tweak things or change, sort of, sort of move the goalposts in terms of incentive mechanisms and whatnot. But you know, on, on the grand scheme of things, subnets are incredibly um, transparent compared to a traditional stock. There is a fixed supply. There will only ever be 21 million subnet tokens per subnet um, with, a, with a two year halving schedule. So yes, in the first few years of, of subnet existence, there, there's rapid emissions, but you're never going to get more than 21 million. So what if there is a, a breakout, breakaway subnet that becomes the next open AI or, or, or whatnot? There will only ever be 21 million tokens. So you could see the, 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 the cost, or so the price of a subnet token eventually being worth a considerably uh, or a considerable amount more than you know, say a traditional stock, because um, and when you tally that into the price of Tau, so you'll have the you know the, the price of the subnet token going nuts, and the price of Tau going nuts because if, if a subnet is doing really well and is becoming the next open AI, the price of Tau naturally it, it sort of is dragged up with it, or um, or in fact it depends on on the market, but um, yeah, so th there's far more upside with subnet tokens. Some may say there's more risk as well. Mm, I disagree, but that's a personal opinion. Um, and there's huge yield. So most subnets are yielding between I don't know, 50 to 150% APY, and it will remain that way for the first two years. And then it'll halve, but there's still a, a tremendous amount of upside in, in yield terms. And the market is there to gobble. Um, you know, that every subnet is focusing on something completely different, pretty much. Uh, yes, you have little clusters, you know, four or five compute subnets and a, a couple of data subnets, etc. But um, they're all focusing on, on so many different niches. So BitTensor as a whole can gobble up every single market or it can start gob it will be the sort of the, the little Pac-Man in every AI niche that you can think of. And there will be a subnet there just slowly munching away at, um, at the incumbents. It's less hindered by big macro. Um, and again, there's less insider trading. Yes, that you know, there's, there's, you'll never stamp out insider trading. You know, um, the validators, the miners, the subnet owners, or people close to subnet owners. Yeah, they could pro most likely, probably, uh, be privy to, I guess, information that the public doesn't know. But um, I, I would say that it's probably on par, maybe, at worst, um, as an as a normal stock. So you're probably thinking, why aren't subnet valuations sky high? Well, we've only just started. Most subnets are like three months old. Some are six months old. Um, we, you know, you when a subnet starts, it's effective that they are effectively IPOing on day one, and most haven't got their shit together. <laughs> so, so give them at least six months. You know, if, if or three to six months. If a subnet's really not shipping product after six months, you know something's gone wrong there um, and, and also you have to understand that the 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 value or the market cap or FDV of a of a subnet um, is is linked in is linked to tau so when you look at a subnet chart you'll always see uh, the chart do this and that's when they when when they turn it on so when they do the start call function here 
the liquidity pool uh, starts. So, uh, you know, after 12 seconds, which is one block, you'll have at least one alpha and at least one tau, and it keeps filling up every block. Okay, so, um, and so the price is basically, so if you imagine two layers, so you have tau up here and then alpha down here. The, the price of that is the amount of tau in the in the pool divided by the amount of alpha in the pool. So when it starts, there's nothing in the pool. So the price shoots down to as close to zero as possible. Um, and then the protocol starts filling up the liquidity pool. So in the first you know bunch of months, you see this sort of picture. And then most likely a bit of a, uh, a down only chart before it, it bottoms out. Now there are. This is not the, the time to go through all of the all of the big mechanics, but um, there there are other sort of restrictions in the price um, of subnets. So I've said for a long time that there's going to be sort of like an angle, angular sort of uh, glass ceiling. So one tau is is a price that a subnet it won't hit, uh, and I guess the key word there is sustain for at least the next two years. And I personally think it's very unlikely that a, pri uh, a subnet will, will sustain uh, 0.5 tau um, at least for the next two years because of the way things work. Because yes, this is how um, a subnet is priced, but the secondary effect of the, uh, the secondary price uh, equation is um, so price is the sum of subnet tokens times the emissions. And so you can sort of work out that you know th there's a Pareto principle principle in everything. So if like let's say a subnet is half a tau in price, and let's say the subnet sum of subnets is I don't know let's say we have a, a medium sort of bull market or in, in a subnet or detail bull market. Well, what what sort of emissions would that have to be? So it's 0.5 divided by 1.5. It means that that subnet would have to have 33.33% recurring emissions, which is highly unlikely. If you go to tau.app, you go to the Met, oh sorry, Pareto, sorry. You know, the emissions are going to be like this. So at the moment, the, the, the big dog emissions is only 10.72%. In a, in a detailed bull market, it was around 22, 25%. And, you know, the top five after that were, you know, at the moment around six to four and a half percent but they were around sort of eight to ten percent so when you you know come to have a little look at you know what possible uh, prices things can get um you know it, it's fair to say that oh, where's my little pen gone you could say okay so let's say there is a you know 1.5 summer subnets being you know middle of the park um let's say something was doing well, but it wasn't the top one or two, but it was, it was doing well. Uh, and let's say they have 10% emissions. Well, the price there would then be 0.1 times 1.5, uh, a price of 0 0.15 tau. So that would be a good subnet. That would be a very good price. So if a good subnet was doing well, and it could sort of hover around, even over a long period of time, you know, 0.15 tau, um, that's tremendous because if it is doing well, uh, and like many other subnets will, will help do well, the, the price of tau will over time start to go up. So this is why market cap doesn't make sense when you're doing, um, when, you, when you're looking at subnets because tau is the main vector in that thing. So it, de it depends on, on tau. If tau goes from say 350 and then it goes to three and a half K overnight, 10, Tau has 10x in market cap, and so too has every single subnet. Again, if Tau 10x is to the downside, every subnet valuation also 10x is to the downside. So helpful resources, uh, have a look at bit, learn at bittensor.org if you want to um, try and find some of the, you know, the, the detailed documents and whatnot and the white papers, go there. But also definitely look at subnetalpha.ai because we have a whole bunch of videos um, so not only have yeah, we got a cool infographic of all the different sort of single sentence explanations of each subnet along with the whole bunch of videos. It's definitely worth watching this one hour long video there and you can learn a lot more. And then again, when you, when you look into each subnet, you can learn a lot more, um, again, more infographics. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's very helpful.
what else is helpful? Taosat's Doug. This is probably the most helpful tool in um, uh, in there because you can go to Taosat's and just click this button down here and then just have a chat. Uh, and you can ask it anything in natural language and it will give you a really good answer. So it's worth checking out revenue search. So if you go to dsbfund.com and then go to the revenue search tab, it's also on my YouTube, you can see all of the interviews that we're doing with subnet owners. Um, and we try and keep <laughs> we try and keep them for fifteen minutes, but we ask all of, all of the hard questions, all, all of the money type questions, because we're obsessed with you know trying to trying to see you know what when and how soon they are to, to making revenue. What are they going to do with that money? Are they going to grow? Are they, are they going to do buyback and burns, etc. etc. We're going to talk about two quick, quick very quickly two subnets that are interesting. Um, there's one subnet that I haven't bought. Um, and there's one that I, I do. So Ridges is actually my biggest uh, portfolio holding um, for full transparency there. But 51, I haven't bought any. It does impress me a lot though. So, so this is a GPU rental uh, subnet and you can rent pretty much any GPU cheaper than anywhere else. Um, and the thing th um, which has impressed me recently is that when you, so this is their main website, so liam.io, you can rent stuff for dirt cheap, but they also have a dashboard, which is fascinating. So, um, as you can see here, well, they got 1,156 GPUs, um, and you can see what type of GPUs that they have, but check this out. This is the amount of dollars that they're making per hour, 24 seven. Um, and you can see it's, it's slowly angling up, but. You know they're making roughly six. You know, let's be pessimistic here. Six hundred dollars per hour times twenty-four. Uh, <laughs> so six hundred times twenty-four. They're making about fourteen and a half grand a day. Times that by thirty point four two. They're making about you know four hundred and thirty-eight k per month, which is absolutely fascinating. And what's even better is that when you go to Talsats and look at their minor emissions. Um, so here. You can see that their minor emissions are 161.5, but 60% of that is burned. So on a daily basis, you know, take today for example, their minor emissions are only 64.6 tau, so times that by 350. So it's only 22 grand a day in minor emissions, uh, and they're making about 14, 15k a day. So with only a tiny bit of an upside in, in revenue, they're going to be a positive flywheel where you know the, the cost of, of having these miners as in the GPUs that are being put up for rent will be cheaper than the revenue it's generating and then watch the chart go nuts uh, you know um, we're in a bit of a downwards only price action at the moment for, for this particular subnet most subnets are I would say nine like pretty much every subnet is in uh, a bit of a downwards only uh, price action other than a few, um, but it will it will revert. This will bottom out, and then it'll, it will most likely continue up again. And the next one is Ridges. So again, I love Ridges. Um, so this is my, their main website. You can have a little look, go and explore the agents. But you can see they only really started, you know, with this um, Swee bench sort of in in July. To put this in perspective, like I've mentioned before, Claude Code is the best coding assistant on the planet and you know and that's 74% ish and we've got yeah around 60 or odd percent so yeah that's pretty cool um <clears throat> yeah I, I think they're going to be gobbling up a huge amount of market share um from their from their competitors so that's very interesting um and what is DSV fund DSV fund is the world's first regulated uh, hedge fund that focuses 100% on decentralized distributed AI, i.e. BitTensor. Um, you can check us out on dsv.com. Um, and yeah, we are a regulated entity, so this is definitely not for retail, um, not at all. Uh, but 
we are for high net worth investors, accredited investors, funds and funder funds and also family officers. And there is a link to DSV in the video description below. So chat soon. Cheerio. Bye.